never been to me. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Conversation with Josh Rosen on this wonderful, beautiful Thursday in sunny South Florida. Third interview. This is our third interview that I'm doing. We have an awesome guest today, an amazing guest, and we have a very interesting topic that I'll be discussing that uh, a lot of you guys will probably be very interested in hearing about. I have a very interesting guest, and he's going to be here to talk about it. I see uh, Richard join. Thanks, Richard, for joining. I think you're going to enjoy our conversation today. So I'm going to invite our guest on right now. And let's see if we can get him on. Justin, if you're trying to come on, just remember the camera has to be horizontal. Okay, I think you got it. Hey, how's it going? How are you, Justin? Doing good. So, um, thanks for coming on. I appreciate it. This is just a, um, a new interview series that I started. You're the third doing so far, and uh, basically I just like hearing people's uh, stories and just talking about interesting subjects and topics that people like to hear about. And, um, you know, I, as I mentioned, I'd like to talk about flat earth since that's something that um, I know you have gotten into a lot and as have I, but a lot of people for me think that because I'm a comedian that I'm, that I'm always joking or being sarcastic. So um, in order to, to take me, uh, in order to hear from someone else, I figured you would be a good person to, to have on. Yeah, definitely. And uh, thanks for having me on today. Sorry if I'm uh, not looking around. I'm trying to get my camera set up and all my stuff situated here. No problem. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, share this real quick to my page. Okay. Cool. Okay. Yeah, I'm good to go. Okay, cool. So um, I just wanted to start out by maybe just if you could introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about um, your background, where, where you're from, and um, where'd you grow up? Uh, so I'm from Orlando, Florida. I was born and raised here. Uh, and I uh, basically had a pretty uh, standard life, I guess you call it. Uh, you know, I was into sports, uh, partying, and you know, all, all the basic stuff. And it wasn't until about uh, five years ago when I really – I uh, had a turning point in my life, and then things really changed. I fell into the rabbit hole, I guess is what you call it, and I uh, discovered a lot of different topics that um, span across from the Federal Reserve to genetically modified foods, you know, what's going on with food and water, and uh, quickly found out that a lot of what we've been taught in school about history and science and um, our food system is a lie. And uh, it was then when my life changed, I decided to get – you know, I was really upset about learning um, these facts, and I, I got involved and uh, got involved with the March Against Monsanto here in Orlando, which uh, I've been coordinating with a great team for five years. And uh, I also got involved in some uh, independent journalism and activism with We Are Change Orlando. Uh, so those are two uh, two things that I really focus on, and uh, We Are Change Orlando covers all types of topics. Um, a lot of those things that I just mentioned. And we're really just here to like shine a light on things that the mainstream media won't. And uh, ask the real questions, confront politicians if they're in your town, stuff, all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, that sort of brings us up to speed where we are with this. A couple of years ago, I um, got into the whole <clears throat> flat earth thing. And, uh, you know, like most people, it was, it was really laughable. It was, it was hilarious. It was ridiculous. And I wouldn't touch it with really a 10-foot pole at that point. But um, it was, wasn't until some real reasonable people that I knew kept talking about it and posting about it. And I decided after a while, you know, since our motto is in this alternative media, this truth or community, the motto is to question everything. And um, we shouldn't make this one off limits just because it's, it's so ridiculous, as, you know, we have called it. So that's when I dove into this topic. And, um, and here we are today. Yeah, it's very interesting. Um, I also would I also came into questioning things. I've always been someone who would question everything, even in um, when I was in school as a kid. Like 
I used to listen to George Carlin all the time because I found him, um, you know, as definitely as a comedian, someone who was very inspiring because he, he didn't accept, you know, mainstream views of a lot of things. And um, I really thought that his open-mindedness towards questioning everything was, um, you know, important in, in how I developed. Um, so it, I also started getting into the, you know, food and, and looking into how our food supply has been completely you know, intoxicated and how we've been lied to about that. Um, and I too was very skeptical about even flat earth because I had no, I didn't understand it. You know, you hear the words flat earth and you think of like, like uh, a flat rectangle or something flying in space. You know, you don't think of what it really means, flat earth. And then I too had someone very intelligent, um, who I consider intelligent, David Wolf, who's, you know, you probably know from the organic, you know, raw vegan community. He, he told me to look into flat earth. And, you know, I saw that he had, he was talking about it. And I was like, wow, if somebody with his intellect is serious about it, then maybe um, this is something I should look into as well. So was there anyone specifically that, that told you to look into it? And, and is that what caused you to start researching it? Um, specifically, yeah, there was a person on Facebook, a friend of mine, Christy, and she was posting about it. And I respected her opinion on some things. And I know she's not, you know, just some crazy person in their mom's basement. You know, I'd met her before and I was, I was like, you know what, I've got to, I've got to give this a look. And it wasn't until I saw the Eric Bay video, 200 Proofs, Earth is Not a Spinning Ball, is what really woke me up to it. And the points were so compelling. It wasn't a bunch of nonsense and it wasn't a bunch of far-fetched stuff. These were real things that you could observe and, and check out for yourself. Um, and once I did that, that was the turning point. And um, I saw a couple other videos. I saw Dave Murphy, uh, who does some really good stuff, uh, Jaronism. Um, but for the most part, it's the Eric Dubay video. And, uh, you know, at that point, you've got to really double check what you're watching in the video and, and do some experiments for yourself. Talk to a lot of different people, which is what I started doing. Um, I spoke to a couple of different engineers, <clears throat> one of them is very prominent in the 9-11 truth movement. And uh, he actually told me just out of the blue one day and just said, you know, have you looked into the, he, he was kind of beating around the bush with the moon landing. And then he said, uh, you know, have you ever looked at the flat earth? And I was like, you know, it's funny you mentioned that because, you know, I keep having people ask me about this and tell me about this. And I have recently looked into it and I was like, you know, you're an engineer. Uh, you know, what do you think about it? And he was like, well, you need to keep digging because what they're telling us is not true about the globe. And, um, you know, when you apply the math to the curvature and when you find out that there's no real pictures of Earth from space, uh, that's what really struck me in the beginning. You know, you'd think that we'd have tens, thousands, hundreds of thousands of pictures of, space, of uh, Earth from space. You know, we've been to the moon six times. We've had satellites and all this stuff for decades, for 50 years plus. Don't have any pictures of the Earth. You know, that was like, What? And, you know, they even admit this. This isn't something that we're just, you know, throwing around. This is uh, admitted by NASA. Um, their data visualizer, Robert Simmons, talks about how all the pictures of the Earth are computer generated. And they design them and they Photoshop them and they make them look like what they think it looks like. But have we ever seen it from that point of view? You know, it's a very small number of people that are allowed to become astronauts. So it's tough for us to really know for ourselves. Um, but that was just a really big red flag was the, the no real photographs and the, um, the lack of curvature. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing that a major red flag for me was like, well, OK, we have images of Earth, surely. Right. Like there has to be. So what, what would you say to people out there who look at the they go on NASA's website and they look at the images of the Earth from space? And they're like, look, you can clearly see it's round, you know, or what about people who say, look at the ISS live feed that shows the, the curvature of the earth. Uh, how, how would you respond to that? Yeah, those, that's when it gets interesting because when you start really dissecting NASA's videos and you look at the International Space Station footage, you've got to ask yourself, why is there so much evidence of them using wires, green screen? Um, the malfunctions in them are... are just too long to list. And when you start noticing that stuff, you're like, well, if they're really up there, why are they faking the footage? 
You know, a lot of their out, outside of the space station, they do their uh, spacewalks, and you'll see bubbles coming up from their um, suits and around them. Well, there's no bubbles in space. There's no water up there. It's just supposed to be a vacuum. But uh, upon further investigation, you find out that they do all their training in what's something called a, a natural buoyancy lab, neutral buoyancy lab. It's an underwater pool where they, um, where they train. But, you know, when there's bubbles in space, that's a, a little hard to avoid. And then you've got the green screens and the glitches showing that there's a, a backdrop behind them. And they've been caught a lot of times. So I would just encourage people to actually go look at the videos for yourself. Um, ask yourself, why are there bubbles in space? Ask yourself why the astronauts are disappearing out of the frame with uh, camera effects. And another thing you got to ask yourself is when you look at the uh, official NASA photos, why are they all computer generated? Why can't we just take a picture of the Earth? You know, the Hubble can take pictures and of things that are trillions of light years away and tell us about far off galaxies, but we can't take a picture of our own home. Uh, that's a major red flag. And even if you dig deeper, I mean, they've even, I don't know if they're taunting us or what, but there's some where there's sex is written in the clouds, or you'll see where the clone tool was yeah. used and there's multiple cloud formations that are used over and over. Or in um, one of the famous ones where the earth is supposed to be spinning in the video, the clouds stay the same the whole time it spins. I don't know about you guys, but if you think that the clouds have stayed in the same exact spot in the sky for an entire day, then we've got a problem. Uh, I think it's very difficult to fake. And if you really break it down and analyze it, you're going to be like, wow, they're, they're faking the pictures and the videos. <clears throat> we've got to ask some more questions here. Right. Yeah, I just find it amazing, too. And, like, you can correct me if I'm wrong on this, that there's no live video feed of the Earth rotating. There's no, like, live feed. Well, what they tell us, like, we've never seen the clouds moving in real time. We've never seen the Earth, even on the ISS feed. I don't think you see the Earth actually rotating. And it's supposed to rotate, um, at least at the equator, at 1,000 miles per hour. But I know that that's explained away with, you know, theory of relativity and everything is, is moving at a much slower pace in space. But, I mean, is that right? Like, there's no live video feed of the Earth? No, and, and really the only live videos we've had are from the ISS. And when you find the glitches and the loops and all the mess-ups, then that's not real live footage of the Earth. So we don't have any. Um, the only official video of the Earth spinning is one where they show the dark side of the moon. And that's the one that, oh man, it's embarrassing. It's about as embarrassing as the car in space. It's just, it looks so terribly fake. And the clouds are stuck to the globe, and they're not, they're not moving in different directions. So you can tell that it's just a, you know, a Hollywood production. And, um, you know, what gets me is some of the videos, the Earth will be spinning, and some of them it won't. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if some days it's spinning and some days it's not, or they just, they just can't figure out how to make it look real. But it's pretty bad. And, yeah, when you, when you talk about the spin, too, we're allegedly spinning at 1,000 miles per hour at the equator, <clears throat> orbiting the sun at 60,000 miles per hour, um, rotating – our whole solar system is rotating at 500,000 miles per hour, but nobody's ever felt it. Nobody's ever measured it. No one's ever detected it in the history of man. So it's, you have to ask yourself, let me use my common sense here. When you walk outside on a calm day, does it feel like you're spinning at hundreds of thousands, faster than a speeding bullet, over a million miles per hour? And like you said, people will say, oh, well, that's, that's relativity. Well, Use your common sense and, and ask yourself. We know what spinning feels like. We know what going in a car with the window down, with your head out the window, feels like at 60 miles per hour. So just imagine hundreds of thousands, even millions of miles per hour, and ask yourself, why can't we feel that? How come the constellations have never changed in thousands and thousands of years? So many people have been able to track the stars, and they, we know where they're going to be. They're in a, in a fixed rotation above us. But if we were spinning in three to four different directions at millions of miles per hour, you shouldn't see the same constellations twice. So um, it's just another big red flag with the fact that um, there's no motion. There's no detectable motion, and there's no observable detectable curvature. And uh, all we really have are fake pictures and fake videos. So you have to ask yourself, do they have evidence to back up these claims that we are on a spinning ball? Well, when you look at the evidence, and they're caught lying over and over. And our really only go-to here is NASA, a government agency that was founded by the Nazis 
I don't know if you know, people know this that are watching, but look into Operation Paperclip. They brought over the Nazi scientists after World War II, and they splintered them between the CIA and NASA. So, and all the astronauts are Freemasons as well. So there's something going on here with NASA and the reason that they're lying to us. So <clears throat> look into it for yourself and do your own research. And you'll see that this, our one source of telling us what our home looks like it is, is lying through their teeth. Yeah, um, and I want to say, too, what, what would you say to people out there who are like, well, this is too big of a lie. Like, it, there's no way that everyone can be in on this. Like, there's no way that, you know, everyone at NASA could be in on this and all the, the space agents world governments now my opinion on that is that there's not that many people that actually do know that. um but what is your what what would you respond to somebody who says who says that you know that's too big of a conspiracy you know and that's i think that's the hardest part to really grasp because that's how i was at first with a lot of these things when you look into some of these conspiracies you think there's no way people could keep quiet there's no way that all of our congressmen and senators know about 9-11 there's there's just no way there's no way all the nasa employees are in on this well and you're right there is no way they're not all in on it it's a simple case of getting up going to work clocking in doing the work and going home everybody's got busy lives and you've got no reason to question the shape of the earth i mean if there's one thing we're all certain about it's that we live on a spinning ball but th that's why all these nasa employees they don't have any reason to ask a question. Um, I'm actually friends with a former NASA employee who is now a uh, flat earther, and she's public about it. And she talks about how she worked there for years and plenty of people she worked with. Nobody knew that the Earth was flat. No one knew that the moon landings were faked. And that's how it works. You, it's called compartmentalization. You know, you look at the Manhattan Project and how many thousands of people were involved in something, and they didn't know what happened until the bomb dropped. Well, it's the same thing with this. It's you're working on one little part of one little machine, and that's all. Everything else is out of your pay grade. It's on a need-to-know basis, and everybody's just going through the motions. You know, all the pilots don't know that the Earth is flat. They get up, they fly around what they think is a globe, and they land. Now, if you were to really press them about it and make them think about the fact that they fly that airplane as if it's on a flat and stationary plane – then maybe you can get them to, to, to wake up to it a little bit. But if not, they're just going to call you crazy and laugh it off. Yeah. But yeah, like here, compartmentalization, that's, that's the key to it. Right. Um, and I wanted to ask you about the, the planes, airplanes. You know, a lot of people will say, well, how do you, you know, when you're just first thinking about this, you might say, well, how the heck do airplanes fly around the world? You know, how, to, how does that work on a flat earth? It doesn't make sense. Um, so what would you say to people? So with a lot of the questions you may have, and everybody's got like the same 20 to 30 questions, you know, what about the planet? What about <clears throat> flying around the world? You've got to ask yourself, does this work on both models? Mm -hmm. And if you think about it, circumnavigation works just fine on a globe as well as it does on a flat um, plane. You're basically going around the North Pole and you're following your compass. Your compass is always going to point north. So when you're on one side of the uh, Earth, it's going to point north. And as you go east to west, you're going to be circling the North Pole. This one's a little bit better explained with a diagram. Um, if you're actually looking at the flat map, uh, if you go to uh, Deep Inside the Rabbit Hole, he has a video called uh, Circumnavigation, uh, Flat Earth Circumnavigation for Dummies. And it's a really good breakdown. And he puts the, the magnet in the middle and has the compass. And, and moves it around the flat earth. It, it's just like running around your neighborhood. If you have a circular neighborhood, you can go from one house to the other to the other and then back to your starting point. You've gone around your neighborhood. It doesn't make it a ball. It's just a circle. Uh, and and you've, you've made a circle. And this is what Magellan did and what the, the explorers did. Um, you know, no one's fall, falling off the edge, if, so to say. If, uh, and I know that's probably a question you may want to ask, too, because that's everybody's first question. Yeah, that's something that everyone always thinks about. Well, we, I'd like to throw these, you know, anytime you say, oh, you're a flat earther, well, show, show me the edge, and then I'll believe that it's a flat earth. You know, and again, right. that's part of the programming that we're all taught to believe that, like, there needs to be an edge that you're going to fall off of. 
Um, so again, what would be your response to where's the edge? Well, I think the first thing, yeah, and like you said, who said there was an edge? You know, um, who, who brought up this idea of an edge? I, none of the flat earth researchers are out here promoting. You've got to ask yourself, why, why is the nerd knee-jerk re reaction to say something about the edge? Well, if you go back and look at our old school books and old TV shows, when they make fun of the flat earth, which is what we're brought up to, to believe, is that anyone thinks this it's, is, a, is a lunatic. And they show you these ridiculous pictures and images of like water flowing over a, over a cliff into space. And when you see that, you're like, oh yeah, that's, that's ridiculous. There's no way we could have an edge with water flowing off. So yeah, it can't be flat. But um, there's a reason why they show us those pictures and there's a reason why we're taught that this is so ridiculous. And um, I think that's to keep us away from the reality of it. But, uh, but there is no said edge and uh, we don't promote an edge. Um, in, the, in the current accepted model, it's uh, Antarctica is not the continent on the bottom of the globe. It's the ice perimeter. So any direction truly south will take you to Antarctica, also known as the ice wall. Now, I don't like to uh, talk about the ice wall and the dome as absolute fact because that's not something that I've actually been to and uh, something that I can confirm. But it is pretty well accepted in the model. Uh, you can look into Admiral Byrd. Uh, James Clark Ross, Captain Cook, some of their early explorations um, kind of detail our outer perimeter world. But uh, it's, it's sort of like a, like a dinner plate with a perimeter around the edge at 200 so foot ice wall. And that's what contains the water. You know, people ask me now, why don't we fall off the edge? I just ask them, well, why don't you fall out of a lake? Well, it's because there's a barrier. There's, there's, a, there's a barrier containing the water and you're not able to just spill over. And that's the same thing we have here. The uh, Antarctica, the ice wall is containing our ocean. Yeah, and I think, too, it's important to be clear with, like, the ice wall. Because I had trouble thinking about this for a while, too, that it's not like you hit the wall and that's the edge. Like, that's just maybe the outer edge. Who knows how deep that ice shelf goes? I mean, for all we know, it could go on for hundreds and hundreds of miles, right? Yeah, I agree. That's um, that's one of the biggest mysteries of it is, is what's beyond that ice. Uh, that's as far as we know, no one knows, and um, it'd be an endless plain. You know, maybe there's other land beyond it. Maybe there's other oceans with continents in them, and another sun and a moon. Some people refer to it as like the puddle theory, where the sun is just melted out like our little area, and if you keep going beyond the ice, maybe there's more out there. I don't know. That's pure speculation. Uh, I think it's super interesting. And, um, you know, it sort of gives you the idea of, like, wanting to go explore again because, you know, we, we think we've got it all figured out and there's nowhere left to discover. But uh, if people knew this information, I think they'd want to check out the North Pole and the South Pole a little bit more to find out what's really there. Because as of right now, they're restricted zones. You can't go there. If just a bunch of ice, why do 40-plus countries that are at war with each other all agree that nobody's allowed to go to Antarctica? And the only way you can go there is on – a government-approved research project or a tourist trip, an expensive one at that. And that, those are super controlled. You know, they're going to take you to the little South Pole, barber South Pole thing, and you're going to take a selfie, and then you're going to ski around maybe, and then you'll go back home. But nobody's doing any true uh, independent exploration. Um, the few people that have tried have been turned away at gunpoint. It's, it's sort of like trying to sneak onto a military base. You know, if you go to one of those coastal areas where there are, you know, people working and stuff that they're, they're going to call the, you know, the authorities, Coast Guard or whoever's, uh, you know, watching that area. Right. I, I also uh, want to talk about why I think it's, it's strange when I look into it that nobody has circumnavigated um, north and south all the way, as far as I know. Um, like, that, that should be something that people should think about, too. If we live on a globe... Why have so many people circumnavigated west to east and east to west, but nobody has done it, you know, north to south? Right. Yeah, and that's another good point. You know, all the circumnavigation that's been done is all east to west. Um, you know, they'll tell us that it's too cold, it's too dangerous to fly over Antarctica. Well, it, I don't know if I'd buy into that because, I mean, we've got people in space, apparently, with thousands of degrees that would supposedly melt the satellites and melt the people in the ISS, but they're doing just fine. And we can explore and check that stuff out, uh, but we can't go over Antarctica. Um, yeah, it does raise more questions when like 
percent of circumnavigation has only been done in one direction. Uh, really makes you wonder if we can go beyond the south rim and what is out there. Right. Um, do you think? Uh, I think a lot of people still think of this flat Earth thing in terms of space, like we're in space. Um, do you think space is real? Because I think that's a very important thing that, like, I had to under like sort of just deprogram myself from you know even when i first got into flat earth i still was thinking in terms of we're in space you know um what are your thoughts on that like is is that just our programming is do we even know if outer space yeah that's a good one too because like you said it's very well ingrained in us that we're flying through space so immediately if you assume all right well if the earth's flat then you assume like a flat disk in the solar system well the fact is, is that we're being lied to not just about the shape of the Earth, but the solar system as well. And the, the flat model is not moving or flying or floating through space. It's stationary. And it's the ground. There's no, um, there's no movement. And I think one thing we've got to remember, too, is what you've got to go back to this stuff with is, can you confirm it? Can you verify it for yourself? Have you seen it or experienced it? And... Nobody's been to space other than astronauts. So it's hard for me to say, does space exist? I don't know. Maybe not that outer part where there's, you know, distant galaxies and black holes. That all may be science fiction. But um, as far as we can tell, we can only get so high. You know, amateur balloons have been 100, 200,000 feet up. And um, side note, they always show a perfectly flat horizon and no movement. But if that's as high as we can go, I don't think it's safe to really say what is space? Where is it? Um, is there really a point that when you go high enough, people are, are floating somewhere? Um, that's really tough to say, and that's another mystery. Uh, but, yeah, like you said, it's a common misconception. And people will post, like, you know, memes to make fun of it, and they'll, they'll put that flat dip in the solar system. And uh, I encourage people to look up what the planets are, too, because the planets seem to be just blinking lights. And you look at Nikon P900 footage of planets. They're just like little fluorescent lights blinking it's, it's not an actual rock that you can go land so I, I think we're being um, deceived about how exactly the solar system works what the planets are what the stars are how far away this stuff is you know for instance they tell us that the sun is 93 million miles away in space um, just ask yourself you know when you go out and look at the sun and the moon in the sky does does one look to be 90 million miles farther away than the other one or they look to be relatively the same size and local in our sky. Right. Yeah. You know, that was um, one of the biggest things that like was like that was an eye opening thing for me because I never I think there's a lot of people. They never thought about like how far away the sun was. I just sort of assumed that, yeah, it's it's far away and we're revolving around it. You know, it's 66. Right. Miles. Um, but you're right. Like the, if you look at the sun and just watch its movements throughout the day, you know, it, it's not logical that it's 93 million miles away. And then, of course, another thing is you go on um, and look for real images of the, the, the sun, this huge ball of nuclear fusion. And it's like, what, what have, did you, is there any real images of the sun from 90, you know, from that distance, the size, it's supposed to be like a million times the size of Earth, and there's no real images of it. Right, yeah, that's another thing you can do is just go compare the um, compare the NASA images of the sun to Nikon P900 amateur footage and ask yourself, do those look the same? You know, you see how close people can get to the moon with those cameras. Now, you can show some good detail. Um, do you really think that that camera is picking up on those little tiny details for 200,000 miles? You know, that's a little ridiculous. And also with the sun's distance, you know, at one point the, the scientists told us that it was three million miles away and then a couple hundred years go by and they say no it's like 12 million miles away and then newton would say it was you know 50 million miles and then you have another scientist to say well it, it matters not if it's 12 million or 60 million any distance will do that's pretty scientific so how, how did they measure how far away the sun was who's been that far nobody we just have to take their word for it and that's the thing that I like to get back to with this is when, when you hear about these space discoveries and how far away the sun is and the Hubble just took a picture of a galaxy 12 trillion light years away. How do they know that? 
we don't even have a real picture of Earth. We haven't even explored the oceans completely, but yet we know what is millions and trillions of light years away. It's all pure theory. And you, you'll hear a lot of them talk about it. It's the theory of relativity, the theory of gravity. You know, Neil deGrasse Tyson talks about lots of theories. Um, same with a lot of these guys. And um, you just got to ask yourself, does that make sense? Does that resonate with me? Or do I, have I just believed it always because that's what we've been told? Um, another thing with the sun, too, is go outside and take a look at those rays when they're beaming through the clouds. You'll see them come down at angles. Those are crepuscular rays. And if you study what that is and how geometry works, those angled rays are going back up to the light source. You know, they're not 90 million mile parallel rays. They are, they're shooting right back up to that sun. You can, you can uh, replicate this with like a street light or a light bulb in a room with cardboard. There's experiments online where people have done this. And it just goes to show that that sun is close and local. Um, I mean, I've been in an airplane before where the sun is beaming down on the clouds directly under it. And there's a hot spot created in the clouds. Um, just another thing proving that it's a local light source and it's within our sky. It's not deep, deep in space and unfathomable distance away. Yeah, it really is um, something everyone should think about. It. Even if even if you still agree with that in the heliocentric model, um, something you should at least, I think, question, you know, is it really, do we know it's 93 million miles away? So, um, I think everyone too in the flat who, who believes in flat earth and I almost wish, and maybe you'd agree here that like, while we do believe the earth is a level plane, I almost wish it wasn't, we weren't using the term flat earth because it triggers like so many emotions in people. I think we're really just trying to figure out like, what is the earth? You know, what is the true earth that we live on? I, I personally think that we're in some kind of like a spiritual realm and and that's why you know we're it, it's not it's not like a physical planet as we're told floating in space. Um, but what are your thoughts on that? Like the term flat Earth. Yeah, I agree. I I, I didn't like it at first because, like you said, it's super triggering. You know, there's there's one thing you can upset people with is walk in and tell them this Earth is flat. You know, I use the joke: if you want to find out who your real friends are, just come out as a flat earther. Because there's nothing more repulsive than, than saying that and bringing that up in public. So it's, I try to stick with the, with the term that we're being, with the, with the stance that we're being lied to. That's the bottom line. You know, we can prove that NASA's lying about these images and these videos. And we can prove that a lot of the stuff with the heliocentric model just doesn't add up. Um, so when people ask me, you know, are you a flat earther? I'd like to respond with, I just know that we don't live on a spinning ball. You know, there's no uh, experiment that you can replicate that shows water clinging to the exterior of a shape while spinning. There's no experiment that can show water resting in a curved state, not when it's being unmanipulated. Water lays flat and level at whenever it is resting. I mean, look at a swimming pool, look at your bathtub, look at a glass of water, look at the ocean, hence sea level. It's level and flat and it doesn't curve. And if we can't replicate it in any um, practical experiment and observe it, true science, you know, that's another thing I want to touch on here is it's people say that flat earthers are anti-science. Really, we're the most pro-science it gets. The heliocentric model is based on theory. Everything out of Neil deGrasse Tyson's mouth about black holes is theory. No one's ever been there. You can't replicate it. But we are about observing, measuring, testing, and repeating the scientific method. And we can replicate, you know, flat water. We can't replicate curved spinning water. We all know what happens when you spin a wet tennis ball. And you also can't replicate or detect the motion of the earth or the curvature of the earth. So this is what, what it boils down to. It boils down to science and that what we can prove. And we can't prove that we live on a spinning ball. There's absolutely no proof of that. The only proof of that is um, images that are admitted fakes. Public indoctrination, everyone knows because my parents and my teacher taught me. And, and that's really it. Um, you know, we have the boats going over the horizon thing, which we can get into if you'd like, but, or Eratosthenes. But, but some of these, these things have been um, disproven with technology. And it's, it's, we're fortunate to be able to have the technology we have today to do that. But, um, but yeah, back to your original point is, 
I try to steer away from the flat earth term. Obviously, it's not flat as a pancake. Yes, we have mountains and valleys, and there's different elevations. Uh, so it's not specifically flat, flat. But uh, the fact of the matter is, is there's no proof we live on a spinning ball. There's no evidence to back up that claim. Uh, so that's kind of what I like to go with. But it is hard to escape the, the term because yeah. it is what it is, and that's what it's become. Yeah, it is, definitely. And, you know, you have a lot of mainstream science sites. So I was going to go over that just mock flat earth um, and all people that, you know, think of flat earth. And that's unfortunate that, you know, if, if, you're, if they're really scientists, you would think they would critically examine everything instead of just automatically just you know, that's, that's the yeah. irony. If, you're, if you are a scientist, you should critically examine all possibilities. Yes, I agree. And then, you know, science is never set in stone. We're always accepting new information. We're making new discoveries. It shouldn't be this, uh, this dogma, this religion that it's become. You know, people just yell out science, bro, or do you even science? Or they just yell gravity. Well, what is gravity? Have you ever been able to prove it? Is, is it just a theory? You know, um, it's weird. Science gets this like, it's like you can't question it. Like, like it is. It's like a religion. It's like, okay, these scientists have said something, then it's fact. Well, no, it's not fact. We need to double check it. We need to see if we can replicate it and, and show that it's provable in our real world. But the problem is, is if people have just, they just say science. Well, let me remind you that science is made up of scientists, which are humans. And newsflash, humans can be corrupted and manipulated by money. We know that Monsanto scientists, we know that the vaccine scientists, people are paid off to shut up, whether it's politics, whether it's rigging of whatever. Um, you know, humans can be manipulated by money and greed. And I don't think that space scientists are immune from that. And I just think that's a good thing to remind people is we shouldn't just take their word for it. We should check up on it and we should trust our own senses. Absolutely. Um, I wanted to go over a couple of the arguments that people will bring up is I'm sure people will um, they'll type in Google maybe after seeing this and be like ways we know the earth is round and, and then they'll come up in an article by like popular science um, and one of the biggest proofs that people use for the sphere earth and I hear Neil deGrasse Tyson talking about this all the time is um, eclipses that how can you have, you know, a lunar eclipse, for example, if that's the Earth casting a shadow on the moon, why, why does it look round and not, you know, flat? So what, what would you say about eclipses? Um, well, this one is, these get funny because people bring up the moon and the stars and things in the sky to prove the shape of the Earth. Now, you've got to just think about what you're doing there. That is a stretch in itself. You're looking up at the lights in the sky making a determination about the shape of the ground beneath your feet. So that's a stretch in itself. Um, uh, there's, throughout history, it's been, been recorded over 50 times when an eclipse happens, the sun and the moon are both visible in the sky above the horizon. And that totally goes against what we're told is happening with eclipse. We're told that the sun, the moon, and the earth line up like three pool balls in a row, and one is eclipsing the other one, causing that shadow. Well, if the sun and the moon are both visible in the sky, one's like over here, one's over here above the horizon, and there's an eclipse happening over here with the moon, then something else is causing the eclipse. I don't pretend to know what exactly is going on. I don't think a lot of people don't, but it's, it's something worth looking into. And uh, there's something called Rahu and Ketu. Um, some people believe that there is a black sun a um, translucent or invisible celestial body that we don't see until it does the eclipse. Now, I can't prove that, um, but we know that it's not what they're telling us because the sun and moon have been visible together, and that, that wasn't what's making the eclipse. Um, but once again, you can't just say, hey, I don't know how the eclipse is working, or I don't know how the stars are working, therefore it must be a globe. Um, that's an assumption, and that's not, that's not proof. That's not uh, measuring the curvature. That's not uh, verifying it in any way. Yeah, definitely. Um, another argument that on a lot of um, mainstream science websites is ships going over the horizon. You know, that's oh, my favorite a common one. That, I mean, I learned it from Bill Nye, the science guy. Uh, so that that can be that's something we can 
um, experiment with ourselves, right? To see if the shift is truly going over the curve of the earth. Yes, and yes. I just, I just wish that Aristotle and all of his buddies had a Nikon P900 back way, way back when. Because, you know, they made the assumption, which unfortunately was an incorrect assumption, that just because the ship is disappearing out in the distance, that it must be going over the curve. Well, they didn't have the technology we have today. But if you take a Nikon P900, which is like essentially been dubbed like the flat earth camera now because it's got such great quality um, for what we're doing, you can let a ship go over that curvature that you think it's gone over. Let it go 100% out of your view. It's no longer visible. It's over the horizon. Now take out your camera and zoom in and you can pull that ship in its entirety back into view minus the slight distortion from the atmosphere. So that totally disproves the fact that it went over a curve. It simply is going out of your sight, converging at the vanishing point. Anybody who was in art class or, or, or does paintings knows how um, the vanishing point works, knows how things disappear at the horizon. Just like you would see light poles start to get lower as the further they get away and how clouds appear to be ramping down to the horizon and the sea appears to be ramping up and converges at your eye level. Um, eventually things go out of our range and that's what's happening with the boat. And since we can pull it back into view, we're not magically pulling it back over the curve. Um, that just disproves the fact that uh, that boats are going over the curvature. Yeah, definitely. And again, as you said, that's something everyone can do for themselves. You can um, grab a, a zoom lens like a P900 or if you don't have one, just uh, any uh, a telescope of some kind and just check that out for yourself and see if you can bring the, the ship back into view, um, which shouldn't be possible. Um, if you can, there's somebody who just commented. Um, if you want to address them, I don't know if you can see the comments. Um, the uh, thousands of years one? Yeah. yeah let me Austin. see if I can, I can only see some of it. Okay. Yeah, so he says, thousands of years of collaborative research by many people have pulled evidence to come to the conclusion we teach. On the other hand, you guys have YouTube and a lack of knowledge. So um, Yeah, and that's, that's, that's an interesting comment. And I mean, don't get me wrong, I had the same thought at first. You know, all these scientists, they can't be wrong. Well, like we said with the compartmentalization, it, it, goes, it just goes to show that people are just repeating what they've been told. You know, we've got Bill Nye and Neil deGrasse repeating these boats over the horizon proofs which is like the number one proof of spherical earth well it's not true and you can easily disprove it with it with a powerful zoom lens so when you check on their evidence and you see that it doesn't add up then we have a problem and um you know a lot of people knock on youtube and that's okay but um you know neil degrasse tyson has a youtube channel does that make what he says invalid i don't think so you know youtube is just a, a medium to um to present information it's a channel to bring you to bring you info. So you don't want to knock, you know, Facebook or YouTube saying it's uncredible. It's the information that's provided. It's your job to go home, look up the information in the video, see, talk, look up Eric Dubay's video, and look up James Clark Ross, look up Admiral Byrd, look up Robert Simmons, the data, um, the data visualizer for NASA. See if he really said these things about Earth being photoshopped, and he does. So. YouTube is just a way to get information to people. It's, it's our job to research it for ourselves and come to our own conclusion. So that's, that's what we do. And, and you just have to make, have your own discernment. And when I looked into what NASA was telling me, and when I looked into the things in, for instance, in Eric Dubay video, the stuff in the Dubay video resonates a lot more and you can, you can prove it for yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, and I think just to, at least for me personally, I know a lot of people in the flat earth community um, come down really hard on Neil deGrasse Tyson and, and Bill Nye. I happen to think that they ge they genuinely believe what they're telling people. But the problem is they're so um, indoctrinated into their belief system, which it, it is a belief system. Tyson is an astrophysicist into space. So he's going off things that other people have told him. Um, I, I don't think that Neil deGrasse Tyson necessarily has bad intent. I just think that, like, how could he possibly um, back out of his belief that he's made a livelihood out of? You know, he's so he's gotten, he's written books, he's he's taught and lectured, he's known as the you know the face of science right now. So it, 
he can't he can't change his view on this, which is unfortunate. No, and you're right. I, I think that I may be with you there. I, I stay on the fence of, of who's in on it and who's not, because like you said, not everyone's in on it. Very few people, only like the top 1% of some of these organizations know. And someone like Neil deGrasse Tyson, you know, maybe he really does just believe what he's spewing. Um, and like you said, someone in that field and with that um, status, they are going to be the hardest to crack. You know, you, you run into someone who really loves Star Wars and really loves NASA they're going to argue and fight you to the death about this because they're so heavily invested in it. And the same thing with Neil deGrasse Tyson. He's very invested in this. Like you said, this is his livelihood. So for him to even question it is, is still ridiculous to him. Um, and, but maybe we're just being naive. Maybe Neil deGrasse Tyson and Brian Cox are well in the know. Maybe they figured it out years ago and they just get paid a lot to, to, to keep the charade up. I, it's, it's tough for me to say, but it's, it's interesting. Absolutely. Um, and I was going to say with, you know, the space programming that goes on, one thing I've noticed since I started questioning what the Earth was is I'm seeing T-shirts everywhere. And I don't know if you have two people that wear NASA T-shirts and also yeah. Star I mean, these are like everywhere. I can't go anywhere, any store in public where somebody's where I don't see somebody wearing either a NASA T-shirt or a Star Wars T-shirt. And I think that speaks to the the Deeps, that's programming that's gone on that space is real and outer space exists um have you noticed the same thing yeah i have and i you know it's tough for me to say if it was happening before because you know i didn't pay attention to that stuff as much but once i got into this topic i started noticing the nasa shirts at target and people wearing them and wearing the hat um, i actually gave somebody a ride yesterday that had a nasa hat on it was right before i was uh talking about going live with you and it was just so ironic but um yeah, I don't know what that's about. Maybe they're maybe they're pumping it out and um, trying to get people on board. It, it, it seems like it's become trendy to um, like the, the science bro and, and, and this stuff and, and to make fun of the flat earth and, and things like that. Um, yeah, I've definitely noticed it. I don't really know if it's like a concerted effort to try to get people on board with them, like maybe a, an attempt of damage control, but it is definitely happening. Yeah, it's um, it's very interesting how, how I've noticed that, you know, those Star Wars t-shirts, like I said, everywhere I go now. Um, one thing I also wanted to bring up was this question comes up all the time, which is, why would they lie? You know, why, what's the point of, of keeping this lie going about the shape of the Earth? Right. Well, first off, the uh, NASA rakes in $52 million a day to explore space. So you've just got to think if they're not really exploring space, they're uh, stealing a lot of money from the taxpayers. And um, what they're funneling it to, maybe black budget programs, um, that's a motive, money, obviously financial. But it's obviously bigger than that, and it's deeper than that, because this has gone on for generations. Um, there's a lot of answers here, man. There could be uh, some people think that they're hiding the creator. They're hiding the fact that we're the center of the universe and that everything revolves above us just as we observe. Uh, people think that they're hiding more land. Admiral Byrd said that there was a, an area as big as America beyond the um, North South Pole. Um, and there's no unexplored continents that we know of on the globe. So this would mean that there is more land beyond the ice perimeter. Uh, maybe there's an unlimited amount of resources and uh, another world out there. Uh, if, if they're hiding that, then um, the idea of scarcity, the idea of overpopulation, all this stuff they're just using to their advantage to profit and to control us. And which is a good segue because I think control is the main driver here. Um, you got to think if you grow up somewhere and uh, let's say that, you know, you grow up in um, some tribe just keeps you in a cave and they tell you that the cave is all there is and there's no outside world and that you just stay in that cave and you never try to leave because you don't think you can leave. Well, I think they've built a prison without walls. You, uh, no one tries to leave and explore beyond the ice because you don't know about the ice wall. We think we live on a globe and the only exit is um, space as an astronaut. So since they've built a prison without walls and totally stripped us of our knowledge of where we are, possibly who we are or where we come from, we're even more blind, dumb sheep walking around this world than we thought. And when they have all the knowledge, 
then they have the power and that is ultimate control. And I think it's, I think it's a way to control us. And, you know, they're probably hiding free energy technology and a whole host of other things with this uh, secret. Yeah. Um, has he, I know for me, like, and I don't want to attach myself. I, I see another comment from Austin. Um, and by the way, Austin, like I have no issue if you disagree with, you know, me or Justin, it's fine. You know, I'm not going to mock you or anything or, or say that, that I'm a better person because I believe I have a different view on what the earth is. You said the truth you don't know and it makes it better to have this, that you are the one that knows and won't be fooled. Live happily in your ignorance, my dear. Um, yeah, you know, I could, I guess, respond with, with by, by, you know, saying, you know, like a lot of uh, people do angrily or just, you're the one that's ignorant and blah, blah, blah. But I'm, I'm just searching for the truth. And I think you are too. Um, and if it turns out that we're both wrong and it turns out the earth is like some kind of a weird, you know, shape that we don't understand, then, then that's fine. You know, we're just here, at least for me, and I think you are too, we're just asking questions. We're not attached to, you know, the idea that the earth has to be flat now. No, and, um, you know, just to touch on some more of their comments, you know, they talk about how um, I'm talking about things as if they're, um, you know, absolute. Um, I, I do like to, to highlight that I don't know for sure about the eclipse or the ice wall or what's, what's beyond that there because I've never been there. But the things that I can confirm is that we don't live on a spinning ball because there's no evidence to back up that claim um you know you could i guess i just encourage people to do their own research i'm not going to convince somebody in, a, in one video or in one comment section um it's just up to you to look into it for yourself and see what really resonates with you yeah i agree that's really the main point it's like do your own research Kyrie irving said that too and a lot of people <laughs> got on him um and by the way Kyrie irving is not trolling he definitely uh you know, looked into this for himself and, you know, that's his viewpoint, but it's amazing how the media just, you know, jumps on anyone who comes out of a different viewpoint than what they want to. Yeah. Any, any, uh, celebrities or anyone with a real following, if you're, if you're willing to talk about, uh, super controversial topics and you're obviously going to be a target, um, you know, we know who, who funds our media and our government. It's these big corporations, big pharma and the banks and the biotech industry, you know, and if you come out against them, you know, uh, it, it's not going to get printed or it's going to get ridiculed. And that's that's the world that we live in, unfortunately. Uh, but it's up to us as each individual person to try to, you know, spread as much information as we can, encourage people to ask questions. At the end of the day, I don't, you know, I don't want you to just believe what I say. I just want you to look into it for yourself. Because if you just take my word for it, that's the that's how we got in this mess. That's how we we just believe the scientists and the people before us. And without looking into that, you know, we can be deceived. You just need to check on it for yourself. Yeah, absolutely. That's really the main point of this. Do your own research. Look into things for yourself. Um, you know, don't just believe everything that we've been told. Because that's how we got into a lot of trouble, especially in in this world in this country. Um, I, I just want to ask it finally, what has this rev this understanding that the earth is not a globe, has it changed your life in any significant way? Yeah, I think it was very significant. You know, a lot of people will say at first, you know, what difference does it make? And, uh, you know, what shape the earth is? And I think you actually said it best, you know, it's not so much about the shape, it's about the lie. And the fact that they could be hiding, you know, that we're the centerpiece of the universe uh, and the other implications that are there. And I don't, it takes a while to kind of delve into this topic to really try to, to really understand that this does have implications. It's not just a shape thing, flat or sphere, you know, there, there's much more to that. And it, it did change for me. It changes the way I look at the stars, changes the way I look at, um, at, at science, uh, space science in, in, in uh, particular. Um, and it made me just want to look into it more. You know, I went and visited the Kennedy Space Center again. You know, I went and heard a NASA astronaut talk. Um, I did a few things. I spoke with some engineers, some former NASA employee pilots, and it just made me more interested in how airplanes work, um, how, you know, lighthouses and compasses and gyroscopes 
all these different things. I was looking into gravity more and it, it, it just changes the way you look at the world around you. Um, you know, if we don't know where we are, you know, it's kind of hard to know who we are. Uh, so it's been really, it's been an exciting journey and um, uh, very interesting to say the least. Yeah, very interesting. And like, I, I also would say very hard to be a atheist and also be a flat earther because even if you don't subscribe to any specific religion, um, you start to question like, well, how is this place built? You know, how is it? It's intelligently designed clearly. So who built this place? So that was something for me that really um, got me to, you know, it, it actually made me a little bit more of a spiritual because I was still skeptical. I had some experiences with, um, with, with spiritual things that happened in my life that can't be explained um, by mainstream science. So this kind of like brought that together for me. Yeah, I agree. Um, you know, I was never brought up uh, religious or in church or, or around the Bible much. So that didn't, that stuff didn't really resonate with me. I know a lot of people that are into the flat earth, um, you know, they see it in the Bible and they talk about it through that aspect. That's not really where I come from. Uh, so I can't really touch on those things. But no, I agree. It does, it does point to um, an intelligent design, a creator, if, if we're living in this, this centerpiece and we're not hurling through space. You know, the heliocentric, the globe model, we're just a random rock among septillion galaxies and universes flying through space. We could just get hit by an asteroid tomorrow and it would be all be over. Um, it's a cosmic accident. Um, and we just popped out of monkeys. And I think that when you look at that being possibly not true and the fact that we are the centerpiece, it gives us more of a purpose and it points to a creator, uh, whatever that may be, whether it's, you know, whether this is just a computer simulation or it's aliens or, or what, I don't know, but, um, or God or whatever you want to call it. Um, there's definitely more going on here, and we're not just a random rock flying through space like they taught us. Um, I yeah. think uh, you said it best. It went from we went from an intelligent design to a cosmic accident, and uh, it's it's a it's a godless theory, is what some people call it. Yeah, absolutely. It definitely changes the way I view life. I guess. Uh, well, I guess. I also I want to just ask at the end here, what's like. What's what's going to be the outcome here? Like, are we going to? Is this all going to be exposed? Like, within the next ten years, is there going to be some whistleblower at NASA or going to hit like triple mass at some point where people are like, "Yeah, we just we were lied to about what the Earth is." I don't know. That's a that's a real. That's probably the toughest question of the night. Because um, if you look at something like JFK or nine eleven, you know we we've. we've it's been a while since these things have happened now, especially JFK. And it's not, I don't know if it's common knowledge. You know, most people just think that it was Lee Harvey Oswald. Um, but things are happening more rapidly nowadays. You know, with technology, you know, the, 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 um, the increase of, like, people being able to, 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 to download these videos and analyze this information and create their own content and share information is happening, like, by the second now. So maybe things speed up really quick, and maybe we do find this out. But who knows? Maybe we stick with just a small portion of people that, that are able to see it, and everyone else is still kind of drinking the Kool-Aid, I guess you could say. It's really tough to say. Yeah. I hope we get a whistleblower and someone that blows it wide open. <laughs> yeah, um, if you go on a YouTube page, Mark Sargent, he has on a lot of people um, in the military that actually talk about this. So he might be the one that, that someone comes out and, you know, discloses this. Yeah, I've got, I've got some friends who, um, uh, people I've become friends with now through this and they're former military. You know, and they've, they've shot snipers and they, they can attest to the Coriolis being a myth. And, um, you know, they talk about rail guns and, and just the way things work that, flying through the air and parachuting and all this stuff. And there is no curvature, you know, <laughs> that's the bottom line with this. There's no observable curvature. You can't see it from an airplane. You can't see it from a uh, high altitude balloon footage. Uh, every time you, you send one up, it's the same thing. Oh, because people are going to say like, well, what about that high altitude balloon footage? Um, what you're looking at is through a fisheye lens and right. Yeah. Curve. It's important for people to know that the curvature like 10 feet off the ground is the same curvature you're seeing 
at 100,000 feet. You exactly. Know? You know, you take the Red Bull jump, for instance, which a lot of people fall back on. Well, what about the Red Bull jump? We saw the curve there, but if you compare the two different camera angles, one is a fisheye and one is a, a regular camera, and you can see the flat horizon. And uh, there's no oceans, and it's, he's jumping over uh, planet New Mexico is, is the joke we like to use because there's no water in that shot. So it's, it's, it's the clues to see if it's a fisheye are uh, pretty easy to detect. You just got to really, you know, analyze the videos for yourself. Definitely. So are you um, coming down to Miami anytime soon again or uh, doing any, anything upcoming for you? Um, not specifically. I think there's another event, uh, the Meeting of the Minds event will be in May in Miami. Um, I'll probably be attending that. I don't know if there will be like a Flat Earth talk or anything this time, but uh, I'll definitely be down there. And there's also the International Flat Earth Conference that's happening again in Denver in November. Um, I'm going to be attending that as well. Okay, cool. Yeah, well, um, definitely reach out if you're, if you're down here. And maybe I'll uh, try to come out to Denver. Never been out there before. Um, and if anyone wants to reach you, if they have questions, can they, can they, should they message you on Facebook or email? What's, what would be the best way to uh, contact you? Yeah, the best way is just reach out to me on Facebook. Um, you know, obviously I'm tagged here so you can find my information and uh, just reach out to me with any questions you have. And, you know, I'll do the best I can to answer them. Uh, if you don't want to talk to me, you can go on YouTube and look up um, Flat Earth Stranger's Guide, 21 Questions. And it goes over the most common questions that everybody has about the sun, sets, and, you know, circumnavigation, and um, the planets, and all these things that we want to know when uh, this is first brought up. Um, I encourage people to check out that. It's by um, ODD TV, and another good channel is Deep Inside the Rabbit Hole. Uh, they go over a lot of these commonly asked questions. Awesome. Well, thanks, man. I appreciate uh, taking the time to go over this. I think we went over a lot of different things, so we have a good, good video here for people that are just, you know, curious about what flat Earth is about. They think that we're, you know, they don't know if we're serious or not about this. This is a good video that um, where we went over a lot of different topics. So thanks again for coming on. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, this definitely isn't a troll. You know, you guys look into it for yourself, do your own research, and uh, I thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. All right. Thanks, Justin. Have a great week. All right. You too.